Now, for this week's episode, I'm returning to a place that I consider the best place on earth for landscape photography. However, it's been a long time since I was there. Last September, in fact, which is probably a new record for me over the years. Today, however, I had good reason, as the promise of wild Atlantic waves was strong. As I drove, I encountered many different weather types and wondered if I would have rain or clear skies. If it was going to be clear, then it was going to be a mono day. And I also knew that it would be time to bring out my big gun, the Sigma 150 to 600, which has been with me on many a wave adventure. So enjoy the drive from Killarney to incredible Dingle Peninsula, because stunning waves and interesting conditions await. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog and today you join me, I'm at the coast and it is after the storm Kathleen that just came into Ireland, it actually came in yesterday and it was sideways rain so I said okay I'm not going to go out in it during it but I'm going to go out after because the swells should still be there. Some of the swells that we had were 8.2 meters believe it or not. Now today it's supposed to be around about 4.1 so half the height but still quite substantial. So I've come to a location that I haven't brought you actually to before. It's a place called Kinard. It's just outside Dingle. That's right. I'm in Dingle because of storm weather. But on the way down here, actually, um, I had pretty much all different types of seasons. I had rain, I had hail, I had clear skies, I had cloudy weather. And what I did is I did a hyperlapse, which you would have seen at the beginning here, which shows the journey from Killarney to where we are right now on Kennard. But today now, as well, is a time when I take off my um, wide angle lens and it's now time to swap over to my beast of a lens, which is my Sigma, oh, as my lens cap fell on the floor, uh, my Sigma 150 to 600. And this is a lens that I use quite often when it comes to wave photography because the reach that you have on this is absolutely phenomenal. And with this as well now, it'll allow me to be able to get some nice shots here of a singular stack that lies just off the coast. And I'm hopeful that I get some waves that are on it. Right now, the waves aren't too big, but what I do see is some birds that are milling around that as well. So that will allow me to be able to get in with this as well. So tide is low, waiting for the tide now as well to kind of start coming back in again. That should also increase the waves. The wind is still quite strong, which is good. So yeah, this is the uh, first step now in relation to after a storm it comes light and obviously comes waves. So I'm looking for the waves on this occasion. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Let's go. To begin with here, uh, I'm going handheld and I'm going to go down onto the beach because the lower you go on the beach, the better because you get more of a perspective with those waves actually appearing larger in the frame. And with the stack that's just out here, I'm at 300 mil and I can actually get a good filling of the frame, but I'm planning to go in and get a bit more detail in relation to that. And hopefully, like I said from the outset, I get to capture some birds as well that are milling around. As you can see by the light right now, it's quite harsh. So I've got my lens hood on here just to be able to get under that light. And my settings at the moment here on handheld are at one two thousand of a second. I'm at f5.6 and I've got my ISO at 100. That'll tell you how bright it is uh, right now with that sun. But what I can notice straight away is that there's a lot of waves that are rolling in between me and the stack, but there's now large ones actually breaking against the stack currently so when I get down lower I think it will be better because I've able to put more of those waves in the frame and then play around with shutter speed as well to have a bit of motion but probably going to freeze those shots as well so yeah, I've taken a couple of test shots anyway here I'll give you a look at them here now and then we're gonna go down onto the beach here avoid this water and then get over to the right hand side so I can have a bit more breathing room but get lower as well to the uh, surface like I said so I can accentuate that so yeah first shots here Talk to you in a moment.
down to the beach and yeah, these waves as they're crashing in here are still quite ferocious. But like I said earlier on, I don't seem to have any that are crashing out on the far end over by the stack. But what I do notice is that I've come down low here and I'm just waiting now for this big wave here, which is probably going to reach me. Uh, not much, okay. So I'm down low here and hopefully this will follow me down so you'll be able to see me. So my camera is set up here. I'm at, uh, at the moment, 600 mil and I'm zoomed right in to the stack. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a small bit of video here as well, just to catch those birds as they're flying around it. But it is quite a dynamic scene to be able to photograph because I'm now on clear skies directly above me, which is great because it's allowing me to be able to have a faster shutter speed. At the moment here, I was at one 2,500th of a second. So that's really freezing all of that water action. And I'm taking some shots here as the waves are breaking between me and the stack. So there's some curving waves that are coming in and there's some that are hitting some rocks as well outside, which are quite ferocious as well. But I do think that even looking at this now from here, it looks great. But on the 600 mil, when it really compresses that scene and fills the frame with the sea stack that's out there, it will look absolutely fantastic. Now, on the beach as well here, I don't think I'm going to go any further over. I'm probably going to go back to where I would have started from because I've had to get more of those waves between me and the uh, sea stack in the distance. But as you can see here with this water, it's coming in quite strong. So yeah, that's the uh, second set of shots in here. I'll give you a look at those now and then we'll check back in again in a moment. Now, since I last checked in actually here, the water is coming in very, very quickly. So I have come up back up a small bit anyway here. I'm kind of, I'll show you on a separate bit of video, but I'm up on a bit of a rock ledge in here to be on the safe side. But as you can see here all around me, it is phenomenally powerful. Now I've gone in at 600 mil and I've done a couple of shots at landscape. And then I also looked and I said, okay, I wanted to be able to see if I can get something in the foreground, more of these waves as they're breaking because they're quite phenomenal. So I've gone into portrait orientation and the advantage with this lens is that with the collar, I don't necessarily have to do any changes. I can just twist the whole camera, which is very handy to be able to change my composition from landscape directly into portrait. I've gone from a couple of different shutter speed types as well. Now I bumped it up to f25 because I didn't have my filters here with me. They're up in the van. I travel light to this small distance I had to walk, but I might put the filters on and see if I can slow down that shutter speed when I get back up to the van. But I've gone for uh, f22 and one uh, one hundredth of a second, which isn't giving me any motion, but at least it's not freezing the water anyway, as such like it is there. Some of the birds as well that are flying around are absolutely phenomenal. Now, top tip that I give you when you're doing this as well is do not underestimate the power of the ocean. I mean, I've got my back to it now, but I'm looking at the screen here so I can see these waves, like this big one now that's coming in right behind me here. So do not underestimate the power of water and always give it the respect that it deserves. So I'm going to give you a look here at these shots that I've taken. Some of them will be landscape, some of them will be portrait, and I'm going to head back up then to the van and I'm going to put on my uh, filters and I'm going to try and slow down that shutter speed as well and see how that turns out. 
it is still clear sky so it's quite harsh so i don't know if it's going to work or not but definitely anyway here it is phenomenal even though i don't have much crashing waves out in the stack i've got some great ones between me and the stack so yeah here's these these shots talk to you again in a moment I rarely need an excuse to say how great it is to have a camper van for photography, but right now, as you can see here, I'm in the van, parked up, side windows open, tripod is here, long lens is on, and I'm able to see the C stack. Now, granted, at this height, you don't get the ferocity in relation to the waves and the size exaggeration, let's just say, by being down so low, but nonetheless, it's still great to be able to just have this here, sit in the van and take the shots. I can see some waves that are breaking as well out on the sea stack. So I'll probably go in at the moment here, I'm doing a quick bit of video and I'm at 320 mil, um, but I'm probably going to zoom in now as well and just take some specific shots as well from up here. Hopefully I get a wave crashing on the base of it and then I also get some of the birds. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my filter and this is the same filter that I use for my wide angle lens but I purposely went for the 95 mil because the 95 mil will fit this lens so all I have to do effectively is just pop this magnetically onto the front of the lens and then I can drag out my shutter speed so I probably want to go for maybe a quarter tenth of a bit don't think I'm going to go for half a second there's no point really uh, in relation to it but I want to be able to play with that shutter speed anyway now so yeah give you a look at the viewpoint anyway here in the video that I'm doing at the moment here and then I'll take a couple of shots and then I'll check in again after that great fun Right, so I thoroughly enjoyed actually my afternoon here in Canard. I hope you enjoyed as well coming along with me. I'm going to finish up this episode. Thank you very much as always for watching. And don't forget to tune in next Wednesday when I will have an episode from behind the raw for one of the images that I've taken here. And I'll talk you through my workflow, my thoughts on the image and my editing process as well. And I hope you can join me as well on Wednesday. So thanks as always. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, Schlange Falls.